Hi, welcome to another video. So, recently, Klein added a new thing called MCP Marketplace, which is basically like a plug-in marketplace that allows you to extend Klein in a bunch of ways. And MCP is actually now almost in everything, including windsurf, cursor, and whatnot. So, today, I thought that I'll show you which MCP servers are the best to use for most of the stuff, and how you can even create your own MCP servers as well. Now, first of all, many people don't yet understand what MCP is supposed to be. So, let me just quickly explain it to you. MCP is a new open protocol developed by Anthropic, and it is an abbreviation for Model Context Protocol. It is a standard and open protocol that allows developers or users to create tools that any AI interface can integrate into their AI stack and make the stuff more customizable. Because this is a standard framework, you can just implement MCP compatibility in your interface and then plug in any tool to it. As Anthropic puts it, it's like a USB-C for AI interfaces to plug in tools. Generally, if you're using something like Cursor, Windsurf, or Klein, then you have basic tools like creating files, reading terminal output, reading files, editing files, and some more stuff along those lines. But with MCP, we can now give Klein or Windsurf access to some new tools like reading Figma designs, putting something in Notion or Obsidian, or even just sending in a simple prompt to the AI, because that can also be done. Now, the most official way to see the MCP servers is through the Model Context Protocol GitHub repo, where you'll find a bunch of MCP tools here. But it's a little more unintuitive. So you'll find some sites that have it in a well-structured way. I like this Glamma one, which actually has a bunch of stable MCP servers that you can just copy and paste and works well with Klein and Windsurf. Whereas there's also the Smithery one if you want to use Cursor, as that just gives you one command to use. For Windsurf, which I use, you can just copy the command here, then open up Windsurf, then open up the MCP tools config file by clicking here, create a new element here, put in the stuff from the command, and then you can now start using it in Windsurf. However, Klein now also has its own MCP marketplace, where you can instantly plug in MCP servers to your Klein installation, which is also quite cool and easier to use. Now, let's talk about which MCP servers I use, and you should too. There are a bunch of them, although half of them are too complex or don't even work. It's actually quite similar to how some GitHub repos claim a ton of stuff, but don't work. Anyway, first, the sequential thinker one. Initially, I thought it was a bit gimmicky, but it's actually good to use with local models as it allows them to think correctly through problems. If you use local models, then it's especially good, and with Phi 4, it's amazing. You can just go here, copy this one, and then paste it in Windsurf or Klein. Then, we can just start using it. If I ask it to plan something and also use the sequential thinker, you'll see that it will get started here, and based on how you configure it, it will perform the thinking one by one and call MCP tools. It's a little bad for tool action calls in Cursor or Windsurf, but you can use it with local models in Klein and others, as that works quite well. Another one that I use is the Obsidian one. I generally have a ton of tasks written in an Obsidian vault, and I generally just tick the stuff off as done. So, what I do is add this Obsidian MCP server to the editor, similar to the previous one, set my vault name here, and then we can just ask it to maybe mark task 2 as complete in the new features notes, and it will call the MCP tool and do that for you, which is actually really cool to see. If you use Jira or Notion 
or something else, then you can use their MCP servers as well, which is also quite cool to see. Another thing that I use is the E2B sandbox thing. It is an MCP server that allows coders to run stuff in a sandbox. This is super useful for multiple things. It is great for testing new modules, and it is also great for testing cold start times and stuff if you work on a terminal app. It's free, with almost no reachable limits for me, at least. So, this is good. One more thing that I use is the Replicate MCP server, which allows you to generate images and save them right within your folders, which makes landing pages and more super easy to use. It's really cool, as it just allows you to have it generate images by itself. So, that's super great. Now, there are some database MCP servers as well, like Firebase, Supabase, and others. These are also really great, because they allow your agent to create databases for you, and you don't have to deal with things like setting up tables and whatnot. So, I use Supabase, and I have this server set up, which just sets up everything for me. And it's quite great to use and removes a big hassle from your workflow. These are the major ones that I use, but many of you may also want to use an MCP server that doesn't exist and create one from scratch. The easiest way to do that is actually with Klein. You can just ask Klein to create an MCP server that achieves whatever task you want and it has already been prompted with data on how to create MCP servers and how to apply them as well. So, just ask it and wait a bit. Then, it will write the code accordingly, ask you for approval, and then it will put everything in the right place and also implement it within itself. You can also then take the MCP server and implement it in Cursor or Windsurf or whatever you're using. This is literally the easiest way to create an MCP server. You can also take the MCP web page, feed it to Windsurf, and ask it to work on that. But it's a hassle, and I wouldn't recommend it as much. Just install Klein and use it to create MCP servers. These are the ways that I use MCP servers, and they have been really helpful in my workflow. At first, you might get lost in how much stuff you can potentially automate with it, but ultimately, I settled on the things that actually benefit from automation and are good. I prefer to do testing and stuff myself, and that's why I don't have those testing servers. Let me know what you guys use in the comments as well. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!